let's talk about Scoliosis Awareness Month. June is Scoliosis Awareness Month, and this is where we focus on spreading scoliosis awareness throughout our communities. The awareness of the, uh, the conditions, prevalence, what, how it affects patients, and really the importance of early detection. And I couldn't stress more on that last thing. Really the importance of early detection is the hallmark of scoliosis treatment and how successful it can be. The Scoliosis Research Society has, curr- has a current estimate that anywhere between six to nine million people are living with scoliosis in the United States alone. It is by far the most prevalent spinal condition among school-aged children and is a very significant cost when it's associated. If you look at the treatment, meaning spinal surgery for curves that have become severe. This, this type of treatment can be very expensive, can be life-altering, and have life, lifelong impacts on a person's life and well-being. So why is early detection important? So we know scoliosis is an unnatural sideways spinal curvature with rotation, meaning it's a three-dimensional problem. The spine bends and turns, and it typically turns into the concavity. Unfortunately, scoliosis is progressive, meaning in its nature to worsen over time, rating from mild scoliosis to moderate to severe and continuing on to very severe. The main trigger for progression is growth. When people think of progressive scoliosis, they normally think of adolescent idiopathic scoliosis in the ages between 10 and 18 years of age. Adolescent cases are at the greatest risk for progression or rapid phase progression because of puberty. And during puberty is when the kids or adolescents grow the most. For, For females or for girls, it's typically between 11 and 13. And for boys, it's typically between 13 and like 15 or 16 years of age. And it's in this stage is when curves can progress quickly. So early detection is important because if we can catch cases before they hit this growth phase, we can have proactive treatment to alter the effect of the progression during this stage of growth. So therefore, early detection is beneficial, but it's only beneficial for patients who are actually seek out a proactive early treatment. Unfortunately, that's not the o- always the way scoliosis is treated, when, even when it's diagnosed early. So when we find scoliosis early, we know early diagnosis can be life-changing. It can totally change the way that curve were to progress during growth, spa- growth phases, which can set up a patient for not only greater results or greater improvement or less problems as an adult, but really for a lifetime of dealing with what could be a more severe condition and hopefully... We're, and, and in the worst case scenario, I'm sorry, is that they end up having surgery and have to deal with a lifetime worth, worth of rods and screws. And the reason why we want to treat or find scoliosis when it's mild, because when it's mild, there is typically something called less spinal rigidity. And when there's less spinal rigidity, it means that curves are more responsive to treatment. And this is normally all types of treatment, not only conservative treatments that involve exercise, brave things, therapy, they all respond better when the curve's more flexible. This is one of the key important things that are needed in all types of treatments. So the longer the person has lived with scoliosis and the more severe the scoliosis becomes, these two things in combination, normally severity, normally means the more their body has adjusted and molded and deformed around this unnatural spinal curve. And this unnatural spinal curvature has now become much more structural and much more rigid. Therefore, it's much more difficult to deal with on a conservative level. So early detection and proactive treatment can help counteract this progressive nature of scoliosis, prevent the rigidity from ever happening, keep the curve smaller, so therefore you're not dealing with the more serious effects of a more significant scoliosis. Now, what are some what are the most common signs of scoliosis so if you think of adolescent idiopathic scoliosis as the most thing that we most commonly think of when it comes to scoliosis the most common signs can sometimes be subtle especially when the scoliosis is diagnosed as mild we know adolescent idiopathic scoliosis isn't always painful in fact Most of the time, this condition hasn't become compressive because what's making them worse is growing. They're growing over time. And as they grow over time and they're getting longer, the curve is growing with them. And therefore, in this stage, normally the only main symptom is postural deviation, meaning an asymmetrical hip asymmetrical shoulders, asymmetrical ribs are normally the only signs. There is no such thing as a normal asymmetry. Any type of asymmetry in a child should be taken very seriously. Even if you think it's only mild, you should never take asymmetry as as lightly because 
all small curves start off with a small asymmetry, and then they eventually, or unfortunately, can progress to very severe curves, which have severe deformities. But every severe case was once mild. So never take a small curve, a small asymmetry in, some, in a child's posture lightly, because it can always progress to become more significant. When a diagnosed is reached, meaning if you see some asymmetry and x-rays are taken and the diagnosis of scoliosis is reached, treatment that started early can have, the, can have much less limitations on how much reduction can achieve and how much we can alter the, the progressive nature of scoliosis than uh, diagnosis is done early and then they're normally recommended to watch and wait and see what happens. Once you watch and wait and see the curve progress, we become more limited. As curves become bigger, we become more limited into re in how much we can reduce curves. So therefore, being aware that early diagnosis must be associated with early treatment. Now, even though we're mostly focusing on adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, because it's the most common that we think of, but unfortunately, scoliosis is not limited just to adolescent cases. When we look at patients that are 60 plus years of age, we think of somewhere about 30% of all people walking around at, at 60 years or older could have scoliosis. And a lot of them could have many symptoms associated with scoliosis like low, low back pain, compression, um, spinal pain, muscle weakness, tiredness, fatigue. We can go on, there's a whole host of conditions that are happening in this later stage of life. Now, even though this is the greatest population of patients with scoliosis, for whatever reason, in most people are just aware of adolescent cases. But when we talk about scoliosis awareness, we're not talking just about adolescents, we're talking about adults as well. And most of these, these adults, the number one sign is pain. In the sense the number one sign is pain, what brings on the diagnosis is they're not feeling well. And normally most of the treatments are pain related. It means they're trying to make them feel better. And unfortunately, this has a limited effect on these types of patients because what's causing their problems is the underlying structural deviation of scoliosis. So even these patients, early finding the thing when the finding scoliosis when the pain is mild and only treating the symptoms of the scoliosis with pain treatment leads to the same problem I just mentioned with adolescents. The curves progress, they become more severe, and now we're more limited on what we can do. So even in adolescent cases or in adult cases, if you find curves, the smaller the curve, the better the treatment option, the better the treatment results, and the smaller the curve, the better the results, the younger the patient, the better results. So early detection increases the chances of treatment success, but only if you take on a treatment that's gonna actually reduce the size of the curve and deal with things on a structural level. Conditions that are proactively treated are definitely more likely to have a successful response and mess, much less likely to progress, much less likely to needing more invasive treatments in the future, like scoliosis spinal surgery and fusion, like I already mentioned, which can be very invasive and life altering and can affect lives in a very severe manner. So that's why we recommend becoming aware of scoliosis, finding early diagnosis, or, and then early treatment as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.